But I want to I want to talk to you if you have your Bibles or if you have U version events. There, my points are on U version events, and I put the uh, link on our Facebook page. But if you're so you can actually get the points right there on U the U version. And so I want to talk to you about let us encourage one another. I will make it shorter than um, I have just for the fact that I I like hamburgers. And uh, I've had two of them since this will be number three. So this is the trinity of hamburgers this weekend. No one likes cows. I'm not a vegetarian, so praise Jesus. <laughs> so let's pray and uh, let's get started. Lord, I thank you so much that your word is going to be sharper than a double-edged sword. And you're going to speak right directly to us. And Lord, we just praise you for it in your name. Amen. Amen. So here's the deal. There are people in our congregation that aren't here this morning for some reason or another. And I want you to look around. You know who they are. I have nine CDs. For the last two plus parts of a month, I have been going out to visit you guys. And let me tell you how awesome it is have to see each one of you every week. And uh, so... What I want you to do, I've got nine CDs and there's probably not nine people missing. So would you do me a favor? I'm going to bring those out after I get done preaching. It is this sermon, the extended version, because you're going to get the shorter version. Would you take those and deliver them to those people? And would you take the moment and would you pray for that person because they are part of our family? They're part of our responsibility of a family. Amen? Amen? All right. So if you have your Bibles or your U version up, here's the very first verse. It's Hebrews 10, 24 is our stepping off verse. It says, let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Uh, and we'll get into the, the description of what it means to spur. So... Hebrews 10, 19 through 25 is the full uh, scripture text. And here's what it says. It says, therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain that is through his flesh. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith with our hearts sprinkled with clean from an evil conscience, our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful. Let us, I love this, this is the spiritual salad, consider how to spur up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as it is the habit of some, but encourage one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Verse uh, Chapter 12, 1 and 2. It says, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight of and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who, is, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is, set, is seated at the right hand of of the throne of God. As I was studying for this, I read a sermon that was entitled The Need for Encouragement. We all need for encouragement. Amen? Amen. This, this week was uh, one of those weeks that just kind of stretched a little bit. Um, Monday morning, I received a, a call from Trinity Bible College where Car uh, Abigail goes. And, and they were like, have you ever thought about getting your master's? So I'm going to tell you this whole story just to tell you about the pit of the pit that's in the bottom of my stomach. And they says, have you ever thought about getting your master's? And I thought, yeah, I've thought about getting my master's. If you notice, I am not a very good student. I have learning disabilities. I, I don't read well, even though I tell you I read all these books. It has taken me years to enjoy reading. Anybody else enjoy reading? Okay, 
So it, it's taken me many years to read books. And so they called me up and says, have you ever thought about getting your master's? I says, yeah, I, I thought about it. So let me tell you about this good deal we have for you. And I'm like, your good deals are always good deals. You know how that phone calls tell you I have a good deal for you. And they says, we'll give you 20% off your, your tuition. I went, oh, pfft, I'm not going to your college. And then I looked be underneath it. And you know, if you know me, I'm always looking for the better deal. And so I said, it said 50% off tuition if you are a district official. And I says, hey, it says district official. I'm a presbyter. I says, will you give me that deal? And he, she goes, well, I'll have to check into that. So probably about two hours later, she calls me and goes, we met together and we'll give you that deal. And I went, um, okay, let me talk to my wife. <laughs> and she, all she said is, I'm in. And so with that, now I'm writing papers to get into masters. And the need of encouragement, she goes, I told you I'm in. No, I wanted a cheerleader to say, you can do it. You can write a thesis. You can take tests. Well, Christina's going to get the whole cheerleading squad when she walks across the stage, even though right at this moment, all she's going to get 10 people, but she's going to get a party in the afternoon going, go, Christina, you're going to ESU. Yay. Woo. Yes, she's going to get that. And in, the, in heaven, when we run the race, it is going to be the great cloud of witnesses that say, you did it. You ran the race. We need that encouragement, don't we? So in this, in this sermon called The Need for Encouragement, Dr. W. Truett said, declare that no one is exempt from the need to be encouraged by others. In this particular sermon, it is true of the family circles. Husband need to encourage their wives and vice versa. Mothers need to encourage their children. Children need constant encouragement from both parents. It is interesting to note that it is translated by various versions. The King James Version puts it, let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. So the word provoke means to arouse, to action, to excite, to stir up and their feelings. I love the, the, the Revised Standard Version says the word stir up, which means to move or to excite or to agitate. Because when someone agitate me, it's not a good thing. The Good News translation says, let us be concerned for one another to help one another to show love and do good. Let us be concerned with one another. The New International Version says, let us consider how we may spur one another unto, unto love and good deeds. The word spur really means to motivate. We need to encourage one another. We need to spur. We need to stir up. We need to agitate. We need to provoke. Amen? Amen. So let us encourage one another. In fact, we need to encourage one another. In fact, maybe today, because it's been a little bit over two months since we met together, maybe you need to encourage yourself to come to church. Maybe it was hard to roll out and say, you know, it would have, it's kind of it would be easier just to sit and turn on the camera, turn on the iPhone, turn on the iPad, turn on the smart TV, and tune in to church because it's easier that way. But I'm so encouraged that you showed up. Thank you so much. But we need to continue to encourage one another. This is your church. This is your church family. We need to spur one another. It is imperative. It, in all inclusive, it is necessary because we all need encouragement during the coming week. We need to attempt to achieve various goals. We need to set goals and achieve it is always the result of overcoming obstacles. It is imperative. It, it is all inclusive in the application. God will will is for each of us to be the cheerleaders for one another. We need to encourage one another. Husband, 
need to encourage their wives. Wives need to encourage their husbands. Parents should encourage their children. Pastors need to encourage the congregation. Congregation needs to encourage their pastors and so on and so forth. It needs to work together. We are the family. Employer needs to encourage their employees. Employees need to kind of encourage their employers. Christians need to encourage each other because iron sharpens iron. We just need to encourage one another. Number two, check this out. How quick is that? Ten minutes in. Number two, why is it continuous encouragement needed? Because sometimes we don't believe when someone says, you know what, I think you're pretty awesome. We need to hear it again, don't we? We need someone say, hey, I believe in you. You can do this. You can make this happen. Why, did, why is inc continuous encouragement needed? And an illness that often goes undetected affl afflicts many of us. It is called depression. See, during this COVID, during this virus, depression, anxiety has been at all-time high. The stay-at-home orders, when you stayed at home, all, some of you probably sat on your couch going, oh, I got to stay at home, I'm, I'm quarantined. Can I tell you that we, unless you were sick with it, you weren't quarantined. You didn't have to stay at home. You could have went and exercised. What? I think I rode my bike or walked around more than I've ever done. It was awesome. I went through a drive through McDonald's and got a Super King Burger King, Big Mac, whatever you want to call it. Greasy fries still. The grease killed the COVID. Hallelujah. <laughs> it was awesome. But the very fact is, we should have got out. But once you heard virus, and then I don't know what the TV's problem is. They kept on showing these end of the world movies yes. in the midst of the COVID. If you want to help me not to get depressed or have anxieties, don't show those movies. Amen. But we need to encourage one another. Get in your word. Love Jesus. That's why it was so important when I came out on Sunday morning to, to encourage one another. When you call me, if you called me, to encourage you to keep going. See, people have tendency to become discouraged even while doing helpful and significant w work. Why is this so? Some reasons within ourselves make living by principles of love and helpless dif help helpfulness difficult. By nature, we are immature and self-centered. What? We find it easier to hate than to love. We find it easier to quit than to continue. We find we must overcome these inward inclinations. The right kind of encouragement can help us. Some reason outside ourselves make living by principle of love and helpfulness difficult. We live in a self-centered world that measures success largely in terms of having and acquiring and accomplishing. There is not much encouragement for people to be anything other than self-centered. We live in a world that says, he who has the most toys still dies. It doesn't matter what you have, you need to be encouraged. We need to encourage one another. Amen? Amen. We need to lift one another's up. We live in a self-centered world. How can you get yourself better? It doesn't matter how much stuff you you have it matters how you're living for the Lord come on am I preaching to myself or I'm preaching to the trees I should be preaching to each one of us some reason even within the Lord's work make it difficult for us to devote ourselves to lo a life of loving helpfulness to others we live in a sinful world in which we live provides no encouragement. The devil will do everything he can to create a discouragement, despair, and defeat. Spiritual progress is always an uphill experience. The prevailing spirit of the world urges us to float downstream and is always hard to swim upstream. The author of Hebrew says this, the spiritual leaders of the past in chapter 11, which has been called the faith of Hall of Fame, 
so that they may cheer us on as we run the race that has been set before us. In Hebrews, the spiritual hall of fame, it says they have faith. They continued the race. They, they died for their faith. My question is for you, with all as you're running and all you're living for your faith, are you willing to die for it? Because that's what it's going to take. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 says this. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight, come on, and sin which clings so closely and let us run. We need to let, 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 lay aside every weight and sin. You know what that is to me this morning? That's repentance. You know, for two, two months, we have not gathered. It's time that we just kind of look. I want you just to bow your heads and just, just begin to think. I don't, I don't want any movement. I don't need music right now, Carrie. I just want you to just begin to think. The decision you have made in the last several months, have you laid, a, laid aside the weight that have so entangled you? The question I'm asking you with that, how's your spiritual life? How is your spiritual life? Because I know when I, when I am encompassed with, with just the stay-at-home orders or the, or the stuff, the devil loves to take the weakness or the, the mind that begins to play tricks because he's cunning. That's what the Bible says. He's a snake. And I want you to begin to evaluate. In the last two months, are you, did you make the right decisions? Or today, do you need to say, I need to repent. I need to lay aside. I need to get right back with the Lord. Because there has been times through these two months that I had to repent. I had to lay my life back down and say, God, I'm sorry for those thought processes that went through my mind. And God, please forgive me. And what's great is that he says he does. So I'm going to ask you right now, without anybody looking around, I don't care if we're in the backyard. God can change your life right here. Would you just ask him to forgive you right now? Say, Jesus, forgive me. I am sorry. You are my savior. I'm giving my life back to you. You are God, and I want you to be the God of my life. I became lukewarm. I want you to begin to stir it up again. And I want to run that race fully. In your name. Amen. Amen. So as this verse continues, it says, which clings so closely, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. You may never have ever thought of yourself as a runner. But it says run the race with endurance. It means don't give up. Keep it going. Why? Because you're keeping your eyes focused on Jesus because he's the founder and the perfecter of your faith. Why? Who is for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Come on, church. He can change everybody's life. He changed my life. He can change yours. And this could be the brand new beginning. So run the race. Encourage one another. I, I watched a race just the other day. I know there's no, they're all reruns now. 
But I watched this guy who was falling at the end of the race, and he was so tired, he was so exhausted that he had to literally roll across the finish line because he was so exhausted, and everybody's still cheering him on. He was so exhausted, he laid on the ground, and he rolled his body across the finish line because he won the finish. Let's finish the race right. Let's finish the race right, church. Let's this church on the corner of 9th and Yuba finish the race right. Let's the people in Burlington and New Strawn and, and Gridley and Leroy finish the race right. And Waverly finish the race right. The church in Kansas finish the race right. Come on, church. It's about time that we, as a church, rise up and finish the race right. Let's pray. Lord, we love you when we praise you. And Lord, we give you today.